<laughs> editing. What about editing? Because we're recording right now. Oh, really? I, I, I didn't know that. Wait, 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 wait. Do you hear that? Toss another coin there, goalie. <laughs> we sound so much better. It sounds so good. It, if only our newest addition, Jeff, would, you know, figure out where his microphone is. <laughs> well, it's right in front of me. Yeah, okay. we, we got to get him a microphone stand. It, we got to get him at least a taller one. Like an adult one? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it kind of feels like I'm wearing a baby bib. Yeah, but we got to say it. Welcome, welcome to our newest edition, Jeff the Kilted Caniac. Hello, hello. Welcome, Jeff. Jeff, 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 Jeff. Okay, we're not doing that. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not doing that. Bill Nye the Science Guy? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Welcome, not. brother Jeff. Shark bait. Booah. Yeah, I went that route. <laughs> oh, yeah. are, are, are you yeah. done? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> I gotta get comfortable. It's like trying to fall asleep. Yeah, yeah, Just but we're we're, we're all watching Green books Day right now. We're we're rewatching. Uh, yeah, they're doing a thing Aww. outside. We're rewatching all the stuff from the NHL All Star Game. That was great. All right, before we get into that, Zach, give us a quick rundown on today's agenda. Oh, we got a lot of things. We got Hurricanes, obviously on break for the All-Star Game. We're going to talk about the All-Star Game. We got Fayetteville Marksman, who he just actually got back from from a thrilling 6-5 overtime win. We'll go into that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we got Carolina Thunderbirds doing their thing, absolutely dominating the FPHL. It's not even fair. We got the Charlotte Checkers possibly Ooh. being the hottest team in the AHL. More on that. Again? Yeah, again. We, we got a lot of good hockey right now. Uh, we got women's hockey making splashes all over the place. Not even, not just the NWHL, but they made a, a pretty big impact on NHL All-Star Weekend. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be an interesting conversation there. Yeah, all that and much, much more coming up right after this. You will be seated for the duration of this performance. Oh man, I wanted to get up and dance. <laughs> well, our Not audience cool, of man. one already did. Not cool. <laughs> Omar, oh, what the hell did you put in this drink? It burns. <laughs> Alcohol? A little bit of love. <laughs> but I love it. Yeah, Amanda complained about not having a adequate blood alcohol level before this. Low. It was dangerously low. So well, that's this is the equivalent of CPR for that. Oh, Omar knows how to take care of me when it comes to booze. Well, for well, we got a lot of things to go over. First, first of all, yeah, our sound quality is a lot better. We're back in our home base here, and uh, one of our home bases in Fayetteville. We got one yes. in Fayetteville, one in Care. We got a, we got bases everywhere. We're back in the shed. The man shed. Home is where the it's mic is. It's just the shed. It doesn't have a gender. <laughs> okay, shed. Yeah, no oh my gender. God. <laughs> What did I do? What did I do? I made a mistake. <laughs> so, Zach, just a few minutes ago, you mentioned that we were watching the All Star game with uh, Green Bay or Green Bay. Wow. Green Bay. Yes, Green, Green Bay, Bay Packers are showing us the All Star. It's St. Louis. It's St. So, Louis. But yeah, we got Green Bay on the, the pod, screen Jeff. over there. Did you know that Green Day mm-hmm. is the musical sponsor for the NHL right now? That's why they are playing at the uh, NHL. Thank All-Star you, man. Wow, I feel like we grew up in You're the two thousands. <laughs> Anybody want to be a Canadian idiot? I used to live close enough, you know, eh? so uh, I've got my Canadian <laughs> oh my accent God. with me. You so, know what? I'm going to pass on being a, a, a Montreal Canadiens fan. Yeah, that's true. Well, what, we could be Weird Al and be an American idiot. I, 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 that was, that that was, was Green, Green Day. Day. Mm-hmm. Not Green Bay. Green Day. No, but Weird Al did the parody American Idiot. Oh. No, no. The, the song is still called American Idiot without the parody. Uh, really? Wait, no, I think he was. I, what, I, I, <laughs> I, I'm so confused. I'm confused. Yeah, well, let's move on for that. All right. So we're watching the All-Star game. We'll get to that in a second. But first, let's go to the biggest NHL team in the state of North Carolina, the Carolina Hurricanes. Well, it's really the only NHL team. <laughs> Shh, they don't need to know that. <laughs> I did. Mm. <laughs> And You're not wrong. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> a lot. It is the biggest, yeah. even though it is the only. Well, we have a lot 
to talk about. We, we, the last time we recorded was right before Christmas, so a lot of things have happened. Some good, some bad, some very bad for a certain member of our podcast. What? What? That, <laughs> unfortunately, our fa- Amanda's favorite, Dougie Hamilton, <laughs> is out for the foreseeable future. <laughs> yeah, so Dougie in the game against Columbus. Columbus. Yeah. Well, he he broke his fibula. Yeah, he broke his fibula. He knew it right there and then. He came off the ice saying, "I broke my leg. Uh, it, it wasn't a good look. Uh, honestly, it's it's a, it's a devastating loss. But as far as losses go, yes, it's devastating. You're losing one of your best scorers, one of your better, best defenders, your all star selectee." And for the foreseeable future, most likely for the rest of the season, he may be back for the playoffs. I doubt it. <laughs> I would like to say yes. I would love to tell you he's going to be better. But just the way Rod Brindamore and the Carolina Hurricanes run their injuries, they never push for people to come back before they're ready. So I would really doubt to see that we see uh, – Dougie Hamilton until next season. So there is good and bad from that. So obviously, the bad is obvious, right? You're losing your, your one of your top scorers, one of your top defenders. The good in that is that it was a def- it was a defender. That's number one because this team is so deep in defensemen that even right off the bat, they don't have to really worry about filling that role from with a player from Charlotte. But now you get to open up the space for either a call up or even a, a, a trade. Uh, and we'll get to some possible trades and stuff now that we actually have an extra um, forward. That That is entirely true. And the weird thing is, it was the game, either the game after or like two games after, Amanda got a s- special experience with Dougie giving her a hug through the glass. <laughs> you, you mean before? That was before. It's hard to do it yeah, after. It was, yeah, before, yeah, yeah, before, yeah. yeah. Well, she still it, might it get another Whaler's one. It was Whaler's night. It was, it was my birthday. Yeah, She might get another one when the Canes bash comes around, so hopefully he's there. Mm-hmm. They say he's been scootering around. Oh. Yeah. I felt so bad for him, though, because, I mean, golly, the, the All-Star week, it was a week away. The All-Star thing weekend was a week away, and it's just... God, I was crushed. I have never, I, I have never been this upset about a player being injured. It took me like two days to get out of my funk. It was awful, and I still, uh, I'm heartbroken. I feel you, sister. Oh. I completely feel you because I had him on my fantasy team, and the hardest part for me was <laughs> to drop him from my team to be out indefinitely. Same and do you know how he got me He's 505 points, fantasy points. Wow. He was the leading point getter on my team and i'm just like yeah. do i drop him do i not drop him <laughs> so sad i had to drop him because he wasn't going to create any points for me so i picked up a bruin oh oh man i'm disgusting. sorry but he was getting I feel, points i feel filthy for you right now <laughs> oh god that, that, that's it's, not even fair I'm how sorry. do you live with your I, shirt i need a shower <laughs> my god it's all right well i'm but, out to but, win but it's, speaking of players coming in stepping up for dougie hamilton Jacob Slavin has stepped up for him in the All Star game and did very well. Yeah, so I didn't know what where Slavin was going to fit in in the challenges or or the uh, competitions. I uh, I wasn't very happy to hear that he's getting the uh, accuracy one, considering it just it, it was like it felt like the same way when they put Noah Hannafin on the fastest skater. It's like okay, he's going up against. <sighs> Connor McDavid, like who's gonna beat that? Unless you're Matt Barzell, which apparently exactly happened. But uh, I don't know how, but go good on you, Matt Barzell. But Jacob Slavin is now um, the winner of the accuracy. It's the Honda accuracy cha- um, shooting challenge. Yeah, yeah. Competition that was great, and he actually joins a list of. Carolina Hurricanes, who have actually won a skills competition. That's true. There are four, four, well, now four, Hurricanes that have actually won a skills competition. The first one was actually Archer's Urbe back in 1999. He won the goalie competition. Correct. Sammy Kapanen won fastest skater twice in 2000 and 2002. We need to get his son in. And then... Eric Stahl won shooting accuracy in 2007. 
Yeah, so Eric Saul did meet up with Jacob Slavin before that event and gave him a couple of tips, and apparently that it worked. Oh, it totally worked. So here's another here's another little secret. You want to know what it is? What? Jacob Slavin has the fa- second fastest accuracy challenge. and In fact, he has the fastest if you consider that he had to take five targets down. He has the fastest among those who had to take down five targets. Now, who has the fastest overall, even though he only had to take down four targets? Wayne? No. Mm. Is it a modern player? From the 2000s, if I'm correct. Yes. Early 2000s. Um, oh, man. I, I saw this last night. I, saw, I know exactly what she you're, you're looking at or if it was something else, but I know they... Someone up on Twitter put a post of like <clears throat> the uh, side by side. Yeah, the side by side of the last probably like ten uh, All Star appearances, and oh, I forgot the I forgot who it was, but I want to say it was early two thousand, like two thousand. Chris Pronger. No, it was. Uh, I want to say two thousand three, two thousand. This is gonna bug me. Like this will bug me until I hear it. Okay. I'll give you guys uh, one simple hint. Can I get the team? He's got a twin brother. Oh, wait, are they twins? Are you talking about the Wintons? No, I don't know if they're twins. Vancouver. Yeah. Oh, uh, Daniel? Tre- Trevor. There he is. Daniel Sedin. Daniel Sedin. So Daniel Sedin actually has the fastest one, and his record is 7.3 seconds. But he only had to shoot four targets, and but it also only took him four shots. And they were also receiving passes back then, too. Yeah, yeah. So it's All. different than what Jacob had to go through. Jacob had to take down five shots. Of course, there's complaints about the different targets and how they weren't proper targets. Yeah, and they were all digital this, drive shack kind of thing. And the sensors weren't going up. I guess they were going for speed and accuracy, and also like look at technology. Woo! I don't know what Batman's. Problem is with technology, he's obsessed with it. Well, the game does need to evolve, but there's a line that you do not cross, and he's playing with that line. I don't know. What do you guys think about the puck tracker? Oh, heck no. I I, I don't mind it. I don't, I don't mind it. D- it but during live me. play, imagine that during live play. Well, I mean, I wouldn't want it during a uh, you know like a regular game, but during the All Star thing, it didn't bother me at all. Well, he's talking about using it during the playoffs. No, no, no. No. No, I can't get down with that one. Even so, Minter put up on Twitter that he is completely against that. So here's my pro- my number one thing with it. It's like, okay, there's only one time I think it's proper to use it, and it's not during live play. It's during review. Okay. Okay. If you want to use it yeah. during review, yeah, you yeah. pop them up, you, th- you show the people who's who, and it, maybe that will help people get, see who got the assists, help people see who's 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 got the proper goals. I would be down with that. Or during, then. or during warm-ups, like they actually did during the All-Star game. Like, they just used it during warm-ups. That looks like Cup Penguin when everyone was on the ice yeah. and every single name yeah. was out there. That it looked, looked awful. Like, that looked like an MMO. That's what it looked like. It looked like a video so game. So, my opinion about it is going to be 50-50. One, personally, I don't like it because I'm so used to the game. I grew up <clears throat> when technology didn't even matter in the game. Okay, boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a boomer yet. I'm just, t- I'm just reaching 40. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time, I can understand it nowadays with everybody that's in with a technology issue that they want something to be able to follow, especially if they're new to the game. It gives them something to follow. It gives them something to be able to know who's got the puck because it's got their number. It's got their name. It's almost like playing a video game. Yeah, but like Minter said on his Twitter post, it pretty much is going to be the end of players giving away pucks. Oh, yeah. Yes, the puck, if the puck is tracked, the, the league doesn't want you to get away. Like What I can see, though, if the player throws over a puck, like a, a team representative comes down and, and, and switches it out. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, you see that happening other places where you know, you, they switch out the ball, the game balls, uh, soccer stadiums and stuff. Like, hey, you get to keep it, but here, take this one instead, hand us back the more, 10 times more expensive one. Yep. Yeah. Well, other than some weird technology we're gonna go into some more recent things with the carolina hurricanes with player additions as justin williams has finally made his return to the carolina lineup 
dead. And not oh, only has he returned, so he has made an immediate impact. Yeah, he made quite the entrance. He, the man has not lost a step. Uh, mm-hmm. You're talking about both nights where he's pretty much been the first star. Uh, just immediately after coming back, I mean, he comes back the first night. It's 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 a goalie matchup to the death between James Reimer and uh, um, Thomas Grice. Grice. Thomas Grice, of course. Thomas Grice has always had Carolina's number, but Reimer comes in strong in a eight round shootout. That's the longest I've ever I mean, seen. Oh my god! Rod ben, if Rod Benmore had his way, Justin Williams would have never seen the shootout. But he comes in. He comes in strong. He makes. He takes the goal. Gives. the the Hurricanes lead, and James Reimer seals the deal and closes it out. Carolina Hurricanes have yet to lose a shootout this season. Not only that, they have yet to lose a game when you're back. It's true. But more impressively, <laughs> that shootout was the first time that a Carolina Hurricanes goalie has allowed a goal in shootout. And still won. And we still won. Um, but also, we got to remember. we also got to remember this, that that pop that Justin Williams got coming just coming onto the ice. Oh my goodness. All four of us were there at that game. How loud was that? It's a sellout game in That's against great. the Islanders on military appreciation night. Justin Williams is finally back. Everyone's there to see it. Uh, you you couldn't have you really couldn't have written it better. It's mm-hmm. a story storybook entryway, a storybook finish to the game. It's it was his night, and then to come back two days later, mm-hmm. uh, it, it, back at home against the Winnipeg Jets, a team where the goalie is really hot. He- Connor Hellebuck has been incredible this season. And Did I'll I say his name wrong. It's Connor Hellebuck. No. You're right. No, I. Was <clears throat> You're looking at me weird, Jeff. Well, Jeff <laughs> is the goalie here, so. So, I know before the game we're all talking, and I know I posted something on Twitter. But I watched uh, Hellebuck's last three games before he played us, and he looked absolutely horrible. Um, maybe he's just a fan favorite because he's been the goalie yeah, for the Jets. The, the mathematics have, have shown, like the analytics have shown that the Jets' offense and defense has been atrocious. And the fact that they're winning games can really only be attributed to the man who looks like a wizard elf in a goalie mask. Yeah. Well, wow. you if you I, want to talk analytics with goaltending, at it that way. look at uh, Marathic and Reimer. They are both in the top ten of goalies throughout the entire first season, first half of the season. Yeah, uh, like there's always room for improvement in the goaltending, and, and mm. we've j- we've always been burned by goaltending as the Carolina Hurricanes as an organization mm-hmm. ever yeah. since Arthur Irby said that he put a curse on on the on every single goalie's gloves in the locker room. He's, wow, he has since rescinded that. that. He has since rescinded it. <laughs> how do you rescind that? How do you, how do you take back a curse? <laughs> okay. I've, I've watched you, The Witcher. It takes you, all night and you have to fight that thing till morning with oh my silver. God. Sage. <laughs> well, well, he's from Latvia, so you got to figure something out. Something. Yeah. N- name another NHL player that you know from Latvia. Uh, do we re- really want to go there? But NHL. I'm saying NHL. NHL. Uh, Elvis. From Washington, he's from Lafayette. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, I I also have a few friends over in uh, Europe and England. Oh no, no, play. no! Later, later, we'll get to that later. <laughs> Listen, there are plenty of European teams that we would throw shout outs at, especially the Belfast Giants because they actually follow us on Twitter. So, so back to Justin Williams. Yep. Yes. Yeah, we got off track. There. I really, <laughs> I really wish they had put him a little bit longer at the end of the game on Tuesday. I mean. It would have been great for him to come back. You wanted that get a hat trick. I wanted the hat trick. Why did they throw him in in the two last two seconds of the game? Everybody oh, yeah. was like, "Put him out there! Put him out there! Put him out there!" So we could get a hat trick. Rod Rinmore has no time for your sentiments. The <sighs> game must be won. The, the um, first night he's back, he does the the overtime win. Yeah. The second night he's back, a hat trick. I mean, come on, that would have been great. It True. really was upsetting to see Rod. Ice everyone but Justin Williams. Right. Why? No, granted, Justin. Didn't Williams, we start a chant or something? You know, we, we want Justin. And he's like, I get it. He's playing on the fourth line. You're 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 playing a kill basically five on six. You know, it's you know, so you're 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 not you want your stronger players out there. 
Uh, granted, he's got it's two a goals. Strong player. He's a strong player, but he's he's also pushing it in Rusty. age. So yeah. Well, how weird is it that your literally your former captain is playing on the fourth line? Yeah. Right. Like how how well does that show? I mean, how but that's not going to be forever. Are. That's not going to be. That's just because he just got back. He's going to be. Well, with him coming onto soon. that, with him coming onto that fourth line, it does push somebody off. And unfortunately, from what we're hearing around the NHL, the person that's getting pushed off is Eric Halla, and he is not liking it. The rumors are that he has demanded a trade out of Carolina. Yeah, he doesn't seem happy here. Well, the problem is, are we actually going to be able to trade him? Because his two, his knee injury, coming back from that, and then he was yeah. out for, well, a month and a half because that injury re-aggravated. So the way I see a trade involving Hala, I think it, it Hala isn't the actual trade piece so much as he would be, he would be basically kind of like a, a sprinkler, kind of a... Hey, also get hold on yeah, to this guy and this cap something. hit. He'd be an additional asset, right? No, I wouldn't even say an asset because if you look at it, like we would be looking to grab a good player from somewhere, and we'd have to actually give maybe an extra draft pick for them to take on Hala mm-hmm. and his cap hit just for the rest of this season. You're talking about a guy who's like I I respect what Hala's bringing, but he just hasn't been bringing it. You know, he's 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 the guy that you want crashing the net and everything. But now we've got Justin Williams back in. He you can literally see the second Williams got back, the players went back to doing what they were doing last year yeah. and actually attacking the net physically and not just swinging to for the fences, um, which has resulted in a lot of goals against Winnipeg and. Yeah, Grice was on on every, top of everything. Oh, there should have been at least three or four goals. Like we were just not hitting the back of the net that, that it's night. It's fine. Yeah. yeah, but uh, at the end of the day, we we walked away with two points, and that's what's important, especially in this division. God, oh I don't my even goodness, talk we about are this fifth. division right now. We are currently fifth in the division with sixty one points. I mean, let's put it this way: <laughs> Philadelphia, who's sixth in the division, sixth in the division, uh, with sixty points. Uh, would be leading to Pacific. And out of the playoffs at this point. Yeah, well, obviously. Well, all, that's another thing. Like, If you look at the point standings, uh, thanks NBC Sports for putting this graphic up, we would actually be playing Washington again in the first round if the playoffs started. And then if we win that game, uh. we'd be playing Pittsburgh or the Islanders again. in the second round. So the, o- the only different team, the only different team in the East right now is the Florida Panthers actually making the playoffs. Right, and then that would mean Toronto has to sit out. Womp, womp, womp. Oh, well, no. it g- actually gives us a different matchup between Boston and Toronto. Well, no, Toronto just sits it out. They don't play. Yeah. I know, but I'm saying, like, how many years has it been consecutively that we have seen Boston be Toronto? I mean, if you ask uh, Maple Leafs fans since the dawn of time. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, but that would also mean uh, Florida plays Tampa Bay and – in the playoffs, and that would be a huge thing for the state of Florida if that happened. Oh yeah, you know, Florida v. Florida. Well, did you oh, did you ever see crazy. that one picture of Betty White? How good she looked oh, when the God. Leafs <laughs> last won the uh, cup. Oh my God, oh, my she God. looked pretty yeah. good back then. I mean, did you know that Betty White was born before the invention of sliced bread? Wow. Yeah. This is a hockey. This podcast. is this is <laughs> random fact of you, the day. You are full of useless knowledge. I love it. Oh my god! Yes, I listen. Um. So just okay. So I just don't want them to get rid of Flurry, and I don't want them to get rid of TBR. I don't think they have. If they're going to trade for a defenseman, they're going to have to get rid of one of the two. I'm gonna I'm gonna say something, know. and it's gonna upset a lot of people. Mm-mm. Will it upset me? <sighs> don't touch my Flurry. <sighs> this is <laughs> Trevor Van Riems likes. Final year as Carolina Hurricane. Okay, oh, no do doubt. His contract is up. There's no way we're re-signing him. As long as you don't touch my flurry, we're good. <laughs> oh, my God. What is... You, first, it was Dougie, and now no, it's Hayden. No, Dougie's oh number God. one. Let me tell you. Dougie, Dougie is number one. Are you no, cheating but... with Dougie with Flurry <laughs> now that he's hurt? <laughs> oh, my he God. Come out. No. Oh, no. no. But I have a special place in my heart for Flurry because uh, he... Uh, uh, is so attentive with Rayla. Rayla adores him, and she, you know her her relationship with with Aho and Flurry is just fantastic. So it has a little 
place in my heart. Well, Rayla, right behind you, left Gath Kerr. Hey, Rayla, do you like Hayden Flurry? She okay. said yes. <laughs> All right, moving on. <laughs> All right, um, that's pretty much it for the Hurricanes. But uh, just a note, since our last recording, they are 7-4-2. and two. They're actually doing a lot better than a lot of people think. It's just that because we're in such a hard division, it's not the enough. The one thing that does impress me about the Carolina Hurricanes this season is their ability to finish it after... After, after all after the mess. whistles, right? So, it, like, I'm talking about like in OT in third in the third period, they had really have not been falling apart as much as we were used to seeing them. Yeah, especially in overtime. There's, no, oh. I can't tell you how many seasons uh, we're missing the playoffs, and I look at that third bracket and be like, well, if we just won half of these games, we'd be in the playoffs. And now looking, we've I only got what three OTLs. I believe yes. So three OTLs, you're over halfway through the season. That's good. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. You want to keep that number low because the, the bigger that number, that means you're, you're leaving points on the board. Well, here's the main thing that we need to do in the second half of the season. We must win Metro games. I think we should take it one step at a time and win each period instead of coming out extremely strong in the first three to five minutes. Or even giving up the first goal in the first period because we've been doing that a lot too lately. Extremely true, but I'm saying like we are terrible record wise when we play Metro teams. Yeah, you know, overtime used to stress me out so bad. Now it doesn't as bad. Yeah, I mean it still stresses me out because it's oh, it's overtime. But just the Canes getting to overtime, I used to be oh well shit that's it. Oop, sorry. Oh that's Shoot, fine. That's it. That's fine. <laughs> If, if I sorry, no. H-H-I-C you wasted the one you was you wasted the one. I'm sorry. Oh my you gosh, got one we're good. Anywho, um, so I was but like, still. you know, at, at one point it was just like, okay, it's an overtime, game's over. But now it's like it's exciting because we actually are winning an overtime. Yeah. So, but let's fun. let's remember this: the main team that we have to chase down in my mind is the Pittsburgh Penguins. We have not played them this year at all. We have four games against them in the month of March. Huh. We do. And we're only six that. points behind them. Yeah. So let's say we win three of them. Realistically, I would see us at least passing the Pittsburgh Penguins. We'll see. This It's, it's still a, a long, rough battle because we still got to play the Islanders, what, twice more? Twice. Uh, we're done with Washington. We're done with Washington. I believe we have Columbus one more time. At home. And we have yet to beat them. At home. Um... They're a thorn in our side, though. They They've are. Been. I believe we have Philly one more time. On we, the road, if I'm correct. Yeah. And who, I'm, who am I missing in the division? Oh, Devils. I believe we have them twice. And one of those... No, on, three times. No, twice. Who? The yeah, no, you're right. Three times. Yeah. We, had to, we get to play um, them three times. We have so them on Valentine's Day. If we, if we uh, play that game right, we get, there's, those are easy points to get. If correct, did we lose that game to the Devils when they came into yeah, town? Yeah, we lost 5-3. Uh, yeah. That's right. Um, and also remember, it's on the game for the Devils, the next one, I believe, is on February 14th, Valentine's Day. Yes. So, people out there, there's your date night if your girlfriend's into hockey. Do not take them if they're not into hockey. Don't date them if they're not into hockey. <laughs> oh, my god! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just don't bring them. Buy them a box of chocolates, cook them some steak, and leave them at home. Look, if you're listening to a hockey <laughs> podcast, you're obviously yeah. really into hockey. So it would be really good if your girlfriend was also into hockey. So I just, Or I'm boyfriend. Just saying, or boyfriend. Or boyfriend. Or significant other. Significant, significant other. Yes. Yeah, I don't care. All right, care. all right. All right. I think we have enough hurricanes for right now. We got to keep on moving. We got three more teams to go. We got at least six more segments, but whatever. Uh, next up, we got the Fayetteville Marksmen, who we actually just got back from their game. As of recording this, uh, they are twenty three and six. We just get, like we I just said we got back from their game where they won six five in overtime over the Evansville. Oh God, what is their na- what is their mascot? Thunder, Thunder was it Bolts. Thunderbolts. The Thunderbolts. Bolts. They had some sweet jerseys. Thunderbolt Ross. <laughs> the Thunderbolts. I I will agree. They we'll were have some sweet jerseys. So really didn't seem like they liked so each other much. From watching the couple games I've seen of the Marksmen, they've they've oh they're a scrappy bunch. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. a very scrappy bunch. Yeah. They, they, fight, they're fight, <laughs> fight, fight, yeah, fight, really. fight. Yeah, so uh, they're a very uh, heavy for, uh, team. <sighs> they oh, like man. to show off. Yeah, yeah. They, there's a little there's a little bit of razzle dazzle in their offense. Just yeah. no finish. 
Hmm. Yeah, but I, I will say it is a physical game. It is a fun game to watch, yeah. and they're cheap tickets. Yeah, so any opportunity you have to come by down Fayetteville, if you do live down here, um, go support the Marksman. Uh, go through the games. They're actually getting more and more showing. Um, yeah, because they're they're winning. Random, yeah, they're winning. But, they're actually yeah. doing well. Um, they have won now. Let me see this. Uh, nine of their last ten. Wow. And they are currently second in the SPHL Southern Professional Hockey League. That's great, and it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's it's just it's it's down home gritty hockey. A lot of fights, which I love. <laughs> um, Victor was the guy who actually got in a fight today, and oh, it was a good fight. It was, oh, he wasn't the only one that got in a fight, but he was. Well, there were a bunch of shove matches and stuff, yeah, but there yeah. wasn't. Just Victor was the only one who got into like the drop the gloves. I'm gonna yeah, punch yeah. you in the face fight. One guy literally it, got grabbed from behind in a chokehold. Yeah, I saw that. One. <laughs> yeah, so oh, there's a lot of uh, yeah, there's a lot of uh, angst uh, in this league. Before anybody says anything, we are not sponsored by the Fayetteville Marksman. <laughs> we, 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 we do love adore them. them. We love them. We though. do adore them. All right, moving on. Let's go yep. to the uh, next uh, team. Oh, we're heading up into the mountains with Winston-Salem hosting the Carolina Thunderbirds. And, oh, my God, you want to talk about gritty southern hockey? They are the kings of gritty southern hockey. And I mean kings as in they do not lose. It's ridiculous <laughs> how much these guys win. And what league are they? They are the federal... Federal. Prospect Hockey League, the no, FPHL. F- Wait, there's FHL. They're FHL. The F- they, they, they FHL. They dropped the P again. Oh, they, dropped the P. They, they keep switching back and forth. Okay, so it's <laughs> FHL. Um, FHL. But these guys, they won the league last year in dominating fashion, and so far this year, they are twenty six three and one. Wow. And their attendance has skyrocketed from the well. Last year was their first year, and their attendance was still pretty good. Mm-hmm. And in Winston Salem, they're getting great. Great no, attendance no, no. in their second year. Last year was year. their second year. The Last year was their second year? Second or third year because I remember before I got out of the military, they were trying to get a team together. So back in 2017. Uh-huh. Okay, so it's either their to... second or it's either their third, second, whatever. It, it's early into their franchise this time. They have a long history in Winston-Salem of hockey teams. But, oh, my goodness, these guys are good. They're entertaining. They're selling tickets. I want to go. I went to... A ACCHL, the AC, ACCHL tournament last year in this That's place. A lot of letters. Yeah, it really is. Hey, by the way, it, Words is, are hard. it is the FPHL. The P oh, came oh, back. See? Uh, see? They brought back the P. See, they tried that to That was 10 it. minutes ago. <laughs> they might knock it down. <laughs> right. <laughs> so is it their third season then overall? I, be- I believe it is. But either way, it's still three seasons. You won one champ- league championship, and you're probably more than likely going to win another one. Oh, we, we, we're going to make a trip to Winston-Salem. Hey, w- hey, Thunderbirds, if you guys want us to bring the pod to Winston-Salem, let us know. So you want to hear an interesting story from that league? Oh, what do you got? What do you got? So in the FBHL, um, for the the Port Hutton Prowlers, uh, the, the team's emergency goalie is their broadcaster. Wow. Huh? What? Yeah. Wait, is Wade Mentor there? Right. I was like, <laughs> their what? team's emergency. Wade, take notes. Their <laughs> team's emergency <laughs> goalie is their broadcaster. And then, hold on. When the goalie got injured and he got dressed, he got dressed, sat on the bench, and then put a headset on and continued to call the game. Yeah, oh my say, goodness! That That's I fantastic. love this guy. I, I love we it. We need to get this guy on the pod. He I, is I, I don't a thirty-six-year-old accountant, Scott Foster. No, sorry, Scott. Fo- he's sorry. He's uh, Jeremy Skiba. Scott Foster's guy who stepped in for right, the uh, right. Blackhawks. I, yeah. I was about to say, wait, did he change teams? Right. No, 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 no. <laughs> Jeremy Skiba. Uh, he stepped in, still called a game from the bench, fully dressed in uh, gold gear. Fantastic. So there's another interesting story out there in the FPHL, and now that we've confirmed, there's a P in there. What do we got? <laughs> so, uh, Omar, if you can also fact check this one, um, Elmira. Uh, Enforcers. Hit, enforcers. I believe at one time uh, this past season, it was either this season or the last season, where a bunch of the team members were sick. Uh, a few of them came down with some kind of flu bug or something. And the coach went in and looked at either the general manager or the team owner 
and basically said, hey, I'm in a situation right now. I don't have enough men to carry the bench. And he stepped up and said, yep, I'll go right back into playing again and I'll sit on the bench. And he actually did get a few shifts in Elmira. Yes, so, yeah, wow. the coach actually put on skates. Something Rod Brindmore really wants to do. Oh, big <laughs> time. The dude who still ripped his all. I believe it wasn't the coach. It was the general manager or the uh, owner. Wow. One of the two. Yeah. Do it. Also, a uh, fun story about Elmira. They also had a boycott against them. The officials refused to officiate their games because the Elmira owner of the team literally almost got in a fist fight with one of the officials after a game. It's it's lawless down here in the FBHL. I know, right? It's it still really fun. Is. <laughs> it is still fun. Oh my goodness! You don't have all those NHL what? restrictions. You Southern can... hockey is fun. <laughs> it is. I think one of the best movies you can ever watch to kind of like get a good taste of the FPHL is Slapshot. Slapshot because um, it's based off of the same league that was in the movie. So if you want to get a good taste of what the Thunderbirds do, I mean, you know, I've never seen that movie. Oh my god! We can't let her do this. We're gonna, we're gonna really. <laughs> we're gonna, uh, okay, okay. Uh, we're gonna take a fi- we're gonna take a two hour break and come He's back to you after she watched away. that movie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. We'll do a, we'll do a movie night and uh, just hit up uh, uh, yeah, a whole I've slew. Seen, of I've seen Goon movies. and I've seen oh Goon's the, a good movie the too. Miracle. So if we're gonna do that, the what gotta, now? What is it like Miracle or something? Miracle on Ice. Miracle so on we gotta ice. do I this. Don't know. We gotta do this the right if we're gonna USA do the. Man, you are so behind. Oh, <laughs> my gosh. <laughs> if we're going to do this right. For a hockey mom, we need to catch you up. <sighs> so we got to start out, and we got to start out good, and we got to go young blood. Oh. There's nothing yeah. like Rob Lowe walking around in his jock strap. <laughs> oh Just God. saying. Just saying. You would bring that up. <laughs> wow. All right. All right. Move, quick, okay, quickly I'm, moving on. I really need to see quickly this now. Quickly <laughs> moving on. <laughs> All right, we're going to stay in the state of North Carolina. Wait, well, what team have we not talked about yet? The Checkers? Oh, yeah. Checkers, yeah. Okay, what are they? Let me check oh, my notes checkers. here. Hmm. We briefly mentioned them. Okay, we got here are my notes. Hmm. They're doing good. All right. Great. All right. <laughs> Checks um, notes, good. They are 7-3 and three in their last 10, and they're currently 4th in the division, 7th in the conference. So they're they're moving up now. Here's the cool part: the on t- the sixth of December they were dead last in their division, dead last. And since then they have become arguably the hottest team in the AHL. Yeah, like it's not even fair how good these guys are. Ned ha- Ned has oh, Ned. after Ned. struggling earlier in the season he has become reborn again. Getting back to his dominant form from the end of last season into the Calder Cup Championship, um, Anton Forsberg has stepped up. Mm-hmm. Like he is doing fantastic numbers down there as well. Um, Jake Bean, he as a young defenseman, he's only in his second year with the team, is now eighth in the league in defenseman points. Let's talk about Jake Bean. Yeah, he was just named an AHL All Star yeah. along with Ned. What do you think his chances are coming up here? Um, depends on who gets traded or who gets hurt. I believe Jake Bean will be called up if somebody gets hurt. Being but, well, somebody did get hurt. Well, if somebody else gets hurt. If somebody else. Yeah, but we have two solid demon right now that are playing. Uh, so, actually, if I'm correct, on Tuesday night they're side by side. Yeah. Uh, Flurry a TVR uh, combo on D. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yep. Yeah. yeah, but things are. Things are going okay down there. It could be better, could be worse. But we will see. Mm-hmm. Now, so the Checkers just played a game tonight. They lost to Wilkes-Barre Scranton. Yeah, the Penguins that run the paper mill, and, and they were facing their former coach too. Yeah, I don't. I still don't understand why he moved there. I don't get it. I don't get it either. But it happened. Anyways, who was uh, in that tonight? Also, I believe. The brother of the head coach of the Charlotte Checkers plays for Wilsbury Scranton. Does he? I believe. I know he plays in the AHL, but I don't remember which team he's on. Did you I, find it, Omar? I thought the it deal, was Ned. And it was Ned. Ned. Oh, yeah. poor Ned. I thought the deal was is that with him going to the uh, Scranton, he was going to be moving up to the <laughs> NHL or had some kind of 
Well, that's what we all thought, and nothing's happened. It's weird. Do you well, guys do you guys re- realize that Ned's mask this season is full Hurricanes mask, not a Checkers mask? He was ready. Yeah, he's kind of, he's he's ready. I don't. Still I think he's it. yeah. He still I'm twitches. Still saying that he should be there. He's still on Twitch. So go out to his streams. See, when you say he still twitches, people don't realize you're talking video games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's like, "Well, oh, you oh should my. see a doctor for that." <laughs> right? Oh my god, you guys are such boomers. Well, it's not even that. It's just the same thing as he's a goalie. I'm a goalie. I understand when you said twitch, I thought same thing that Mrazic does. We all have the little head twitch trying to <laughs> Right, right. Yeah, he, he, li- he live streams on I Twitch. Love there the we go. head twitch though. What are those little <laughs> the little nods and the little twitches that they do. He I looks love like him. he looks like Tweak from South Park. <laughs> I'm a big I'm a big Ned fan. I'm a big goalie fan out of our goalies right now. They're all four of them from the AHL and NHL. I cannot say anything bad against them right now. Especially Reimer. Because Whaler's Night got the absolute great shutout, and I got a puck from him. So to nice. piggyback on that, nice. I'm I love watching our two goalies, but I'm just not sold on both of them right now. I mean, yeah, they're doing right good, now. they're doing great. I think we need to bring in a more consistent starter instead of putting the back back and forth, back and forth, because that throws a goalie's game on. So well, what would you say is the more consistent know. guard is available? There's nobody out there. I mean, Holby's so coming up. Who's been linked to Robin Leonard? What do you think about that? It could be a win lose situation. The simple fact is, is yeah, he's a great goalie, but what if he goes into his mental case again? Not saying that there's anything wrong with that because it is a big issue right now. But the simple fact is, is he's a solid goaltender, but how long would that last? But so my issue with it, and I and I say this knowing full well that I also run Cardiac Kane, and we've published several articles on goalies. Uh, 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 um, what? I was one of them. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so was, I write for them too. So, what I'm trying to say is, is is Robin Leonard a consistent goalie, regardless of his his mental stability? Like we took him I, I, to town in the playoffs last season. I'd have to say, yeah. I mean, he because of him right now. I don't think it's because of Crawford as a Blackhawk goalie that they're doing as well as they are right now. I think Leonard stepped up and has taken that spot and been like, you know what? I know I can do this. He did it with uh, the Islanders last season between what? him and Grice. Yeah, but they were a fantastic duo. Didn't they, they win an award for that, for being like the best goalie tandem? Yes, they did. Yep. And he was a Vesna finalist, too. Correct. Yeah, the, I, I I still... No, he won the Vesna. I believe he won it. No, I think Vasilevsky won it. What, why not go after Gorgiev? Ooh, that might be a good one. Well, I think Gorgiev is the future for They're looking the to Rangers. trade him because they brought in another third string goalie, which is getting a little bit more time than Lundqvist right now. So Lundqvist, Lundqvist is not going anywhere. Lundqvist uh, refuses to... Uh, budge budge on his uh, no trade contract and they're looking to get rid of Gorgiev due to the simple fact that he's but, see my problem with with trading for another goalie is hold what you got for the rest of the season i know what you're oh, saying yeah, yeah. we try to move reimer in in, in the off season uh hopefully his value's gone up since and then you get a Mrazic ned uh uh, duo, maybe move Marazic, hold on to Reimer, get a Ned Reimer duo. Because I think what's working about these duos isn't so much that they're one's a good goaltender, one's not, and they compete with. But like once they're they're different. One's fire, one's ice. Reimer's your ice, Marazic's your fire. Marazic's your your, your your get out there, poke, check, fucking tweak his neck, and get the heck out of my uh, crease. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love it. Well, Reimer, Reimer's like that too, and I wonder where he gets that from. Well, Reimer is kind of solid. Like Reimer is, is he's kind of come. He still has the almost like Kurt Smackalini of last season, where he's yeah. still yeah. one okay, kind yeah. of. I, I want to hit. I want to hit the Tampa Bay Lightning. They are ruining Macalani. You think so? I mean, they're they're starting they're starting to come back now. They're starting to, but oh my gosh, they mistreated him in the first half of the season. It was not even fair. Mm. You're talking about a, a goalie that's unproven to them, who's pushing forty years in age. I mean, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna want to play kind of hesitant in front of him, and and I get it. Like they, you need to b- build that development, and they just didn't have it with him. The Hurricanes just have they're really good because they're used to playing in front of a different goalie every other night. It's just the way they are versus uh, a team that's been established in front of Vasilevsky for how long? It's just the way it is. Yeah. 
And Amanda, I want your opinion on this because you've been shaking your head over here, <laughs> saying like, uh, uh, "Yeah, he's, she's like, I'm ready. What it? What, what is it? What, what, what is it?" No, no. I mean, it just uh, almost distracting me with him signals. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> I'm sorry. No. Sign. You know, language. I love a goalie. You know, I have I have my own uh, Twitter page. Um, at goalie porn one. Just gonna plug that in right there. Oh like, no. Anyway. <laughs> You know, I do. I do love a goalie. Um, I, you know, I'm always been a uh, a Ned fan. I want Ned up here. Um, but I, I think the the two guys have been playing well together. I don't think there necessarily needs to be a primary and a backup. I think I like the whole back and forth that we've been doing. The argument for primary and backup really doesn't apply so much until the playoffs. And that's when people say you want you want one guy that you ride. Ah. Well, we haven't had a guy like that since Cam Ward. And even Cam Ward wasn't really that guy after that first. Speaking of what, speaking of which, when are we actually retiring his number, Carolina? Come on, we're waiting. Yeah, I'd like to see that. All right, moving on. Moving on to college hockey. And oh my goodness, there's a lot going on. Um, we're we're winding down the ACC, ACCHL season, and we're getting into the nitty gritty. Uh, UNC and NC State just played at PNC Arena again, and I believe it was f- over five thousand people. Jeff, you were there with me. It was it wasn't as full as it usually is because there, there was an NC State basketball game on TV, so a lot of the NC State kids were watching that at home. Um, but there's still a ton of people, and people were starting to ask questions of why is this not an NCAA team? I don't know what to tell you. NC doesn't want them yet? <laughs> well, I think it's more of they don't have the facility yet, but once the if they can reach a deal with like the Wake County Competition Center, there's no excuse after that. It's true. It's This is a good team... And they play well, and they're coached well. And for them to continue being a club team is kind of hurt. Yeah, plus they have, they're have they working on getting creating the women's team. So there's Title IX taken care of. What's holding you back other than the facility? I've got nothing, but we're talking about women's teams, so let us uh, let's get into that a little bit. Well, let's finish up this, and then we'll... We got so much to talk about with the women's, women's team. Quickly... Um, NC State, they clinched their division already. Wake Forest, they clinched theirs. So they're both heading to the ACCHL tournament, which is on the 15th and 16th in Winston-Salem. I will be heading out there one of those days. Come out. It's a lot of fun. Um, UNC, UNC Charlotte, they're fighting for a position in that as well. And that's pretty much it on my end because... None of these teams, I believe, have a home game for the rest of the year until the tournament. Now, let's get into women's hockey because we have a lot to talk about. Don't we, Amanda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh. l- last time we did this segment, Amanda had a very raspy voice. I was so sick. <laughs> but we have a definitely... No excuses today. <laughs> oh, no No excuses excuse today. I'm good. I'm good. All right, all right. Um, let's start out with the NWHL. What, what have they been up to? Well, I wasn't started with it. I oh, have the we, PWHL. We got PWHL? <laughs> I'm not oh, uh, PWHL. I'm sorry. Nope. Sorry. PW- PWHPA. Oh, my Thank gosh. Thank you. So See, many, oh you had letters. me all messed up. So many acronyms. <laughs> Words are hard. <laughs> acronyms are harder. I that one up first. Anyway, they have a showcase coming up in Philadelphia. I was really hoping to go to that, but I'm not going to be able to. Are but, they having it at the, uh, the Phil- Flyers building or are they having it at the practice no i don't think so i did god i wasn't prepared for that question i don't know where stop it is. asking questions Zach. Know, oh i'm right? sorry omar you and me are reporters Let it's our job to ask questions event details link and find out where it is <laughs> <laughs> let's go back to anyway anyway it is february 29th through march 1st and that should be a lot of fun they're doing a lot of showcases and um but it's nice to have them back in the States. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they've been doing a lot in um, Canada, doing um, uh, Toronto mainly, I think. But I think yeah. they did one over in Quebec, but I'm not 100% sure on that. 
And yeah. if we seem distracted, it's because we're watching the Atlantic Pacific final game going on. So it's at the no Virtua. No one's distracted but you, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Virtua but. Center Flyers Skate Zone. So I'm guessing that's a practice rink. Probably. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Probably. But yeah, it should be good. There's a, a lot of our fan favorites, especially the favorites of the, uh, the particular podcast ours uh <laughs> will be in that showcase um so that'll be fun our local ladies will be there well one local lady in particular um got a big promotion yeah oh, yeah we talked about i don't that. know about a promotion but a new job right new, right new job promotion we'll see what semantics but still yeah i mean well they the they created the position basically for her. So That's that true. was pretty awesome. Yeah, Alyssa Gallardi, we yeah. know you listen to us. Congratulations. We love you. We love Indeed. You. Um, so that was a big deal. I mean, I, I kind of, you know, kind of touched on that the last episode, but I was just, oh gosh, I was sick. Um, yeah, we're, we're going to do it again. It was, it's well deserved to do it again. Yeah. I mean, we are running a little bit long. So it is not we'll, that bad. But, yeah, um, anyway. Also, it's in WHL, uh, congratulations to Colleen Murphy, who is a, another fan of the pod. She got her first first career goal. I don't believe we mentioned it before. I no, don't we didn't, we but she did, and it was, it was fantastic. Yes, congratulations well, With the Metropolitan her. Riveters, I believe she has had goals with the other teams that she was with. Okay, the right? first one for this season. Okay, yeah, so right, I think right, that's right, what right. we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, congratulations on that. But still, yeah. Great. Yay, Colleen fantastic i, yeah, I no, love no. what's going on with women's hockey right now <laughs> um especially with the um showcase that, that they had at the um NHL what showcase you mean they stole the night yeah everyone's talking about the three it's on fantastic. three between the women the u.s and uh canada, canada. that's it, it, there's so much emotion and competition between these two teams it's really a storybook performance by them uh, they're really they took everything from that night by storm. Yes, Jacob Slavin won the shooting competition. Yes, someone else, the other not named Connor McDavid is the fastest skater. But at the end of the day, it's the women's three on three is what yeah. people took away from that night more than anything else. And they started a yeah. conversation. Like they started going in, why is the NWHL not as big as it should. Why are they not getting paid? It started a conversation, which mm-hmm. is definitely what the NWHL wanted. I mean, what, what were those women paid to play that three on three? Probably nothing. They were named, physically weren't. They were no, given they were money given for donations. charity. Yeah. Why? Why while were the, they giving While money the for men charities? who are on there right now competing for a million dollars to split amongst themselves right. to keep. Yeah. Yep. Jacob Slavin got $30,000 for winning the accuracy contest, I believe. To keep. But, but yeah. The women I guess his have money. Donations. Why why is that? Why don't get why don't I, they I don't get know. money? I, don't I mean know. it's nice that they have donations, but it, it makes it feel like, oh that's cute that the women are doing this. Let's go ahead and donate some yeah, money. But I feel like no, no, that actually these are is the serious conversation serious hockey players. Yes. I think that is the actual conversation sometimes with some of these and I'm gonna say it's boomers sitting in the fucking <laughs> backstage of the NHL oh. running the show. Oh my yeah. God, Omar! Language. I'm not a boomer. I know. I'm definitely not a boomer. No, I felt not. bad Are about you? the S bomb, but Are he's you? over here. <laughs> no, no. <Ageism. laughs> so I'm going to be the pessimist on this one. Uh oh. Be oh, careful! No. You're sitting next to me. Be careful. I, I completely understand this, and I'm sure I'm going to get smacked. <laughs> but <laughs> don't spill the drink. You can get smacked. Everybody has to start somewhere. And I feel that what the women are doing last year, they just invited them to do the speed competition. This year, they invited them to play a game as well as invited them to do the trick shots at the end of the game. That's one step closer to making the contact, so, building so the contact. At least give him, at least give him, it, it's a, it's, they're going to be complete, competing in the skills competition, at least give him the 30000 even the, just a split, yeah. some money to keep, because they're still showing up, they're still doing all this, and but, yes, it's it's exposure, it's cute, whatever, but at yeah. the end of the days, they're still exerting just as much effort and putting out just as much talent, if not more, right. than the men. And there could always be something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about, so basically all we're seeing is them giving contributions to this and that who knows if there isn't anything behind the scenes going on that they just don't want to put out there right well, there's now because plenty. there's well, plenty yeah 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 so, well, here's the thing that the nwhl desperately needs and this is what i believe a big thing that the pwhpa has been talking about is they desperately need 
large corporate sponsors. And that that's something that I really hope got the conversation started between a lot of different major sponsors looked at these women and like, hey, the NWHL might be a viable option to just say, let's give them some money, see where it goes. Look at what Budweiser did with the uh, the NWSL, which is the National Women's Ho- Soccer League. Uh, they gave the, halfway through the season, they committed to a major sponsorship, and they made money, a lot of money. Uh, look at their Super Bowl commercial next Sunday. The North Carolina Courage, who won the league for the NWSL are featured in their Super Bowl commercial. That is going to drive a conversation. That's going to focus on them saying, hey, look what's going on. And it's something that women's sports desperately need is they need a conversation starter. And people are starting to actually look at it. But I think the problem is that the conversation has been started for years. Oh, yeah. It's been started for years. It's it's been going on for years. But it feels like every time they try to move on to the next phase in the competition, something happens where it, it gets pushed back. Mm-hmm. Um, where where the women themselves are starting to ask, why are we continuing to push? It feels like we're not going anywhere. They should have been moving, and, I, and quite honestly, mm-hmm. they have an argument. Um, but let's. Uh, I feel like we got enough information about. Well, this one more that thing. We can one, do. one more thing. One more thing. I have to mention it. Hillary Knight shoes. Oh, she should get an award for those sparkly, beautiful shoes. Shine on, you crazy diamond! It literally looked like she took a pair of Michael Jackson gloves and made them into shoes. Fantastic job, Hillary. That shootout though, that she was, well, what was, it wasn't a shootout, but it was like a, what was it? The, what did they call it? Oh God. It, they basically launched a puck from like the second. I have no idea. She did a great job. Oh yeah. She, oh my gosh. Well, see, I was at work, so I was kind of just watching it. So I didn't hear what was going on. I couldn't really see what was going on, but I did see that and that, Man, come on, Hillary. You you killed it. Beautiful. It was wonderful. What's next on our list? Uh, that is pretty much on the we must hit marks. Now it's more like uh, things that we need to touch on for the future and th- announcements. Let, what, what do you want to do? The things to touch on for the future announcements? Um, I'm not so worried about the future yet. All right. Let's talk about announcements. <laughs> And the biggest announcement we have is we are sponsoring a tailgate at a Carolina Hurricanes game coming up very soon. In cooperation on, with the Red Eye Rowdies. Uh, in cooperation with the Red Eye Rowdies, we are hosting Black Girl Hockey Club on February 16th. Yay! That I is correct. I do not remember who we're playing. Anybody help me out on that one? February 16th. Who are we playing? Somebody. I, I think it's a hockey team. Google, yes. Google, uh, Google. I got my uh, tickets right here. Hold on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Jeff, the season ticket holder. But, yeah, so it, it looks like we're going to be starting about 1-ish, right? Yeah, it looks uh, like we're starting around we have 1. A, it's a really early game, that game. February 14th. Uh, our 16th, Sunday. 16th. Oh, 16th? Yeah, that's 16th. the Oilers. That's uh, McDavid and Cove. That's Co. right. Oh, Nick yeah. McLovin. McLovin's going to be yeah, in town. Yeah, doesn't the game start really super early? It's like, like 5. O'clock? No, no, I think it's like 3, isn't it? Mm. No, at 4 o'clock. Four. 4 o'clock. Okay, so, that makes sense Okay, now. so, yeah, we're starting, you know, we're starting about 1. Um, so, I've been kind of trying to work with uh, the Red Eye Rowdies and get this all together, yeah. but um, we also have been uh, collaborating with the with the Black Girl Hockey Club. We're communicating with each other, and you know we welcome out um, everyone. We you know we are a very inclusive uh, podcast and team, I believe. Yeah, well, finally that we get the Black Girl Hockey Club out here. We've been trying. I think it's great. It's great. I can't wait. Well, you you met them at the All Star game last yeah, I year. Did. I did. Uh, well, the I met NWHL. them at the, at the, Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So absolutely, everyone, come out and join us at the tailgate. We will be in the East lot. There, there will be no way you miss us. Just go feel to the free, East lot. You'll see it. Feel free to bring something to share. I know there's going to be some out of town folks coming in um bring especially lots of bojangles with the <laughs> with the black girl hockey club so you know you're free to bring a store bot we don't care you don't have to <laughs> make it yourself just bring it's bring you luck. all right just bring food this is southern hospitality come right. on right this this is the epitome of southern hospitality where we're having an outside organization come in and we're saying we want you we're welcoming you and we're gonna even eat with you and that's 
fantastic. And I love that, that this is happening. We'll argue with them over barbecue. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. I'm just saying. All right. Uh, another major announcement we have is we are going to have a brand new shirt. Yes, Yay. coming up, we're going to... Um, it's going to be a bittersweet shirt. Yeah. Bittersweet. So, so you, you'll understand it when you see it. We'll we'll hold off on the details right now. Yeah, but <laughs> it's, with, it's with Raleigh Hockey Company. We mm-hmm. have a relationship, a working relationship with them. Um, hopefully it goes a lot further into the future. More shirts, more interesting stuff to go along with that. More merch. More merch, basically. But yeah. we're working on it. At least we're getting the one. But we you know, we I had the collab we, with them last year, and that shirt right. went really well. Yeah. But I think we need this shirt right now, so I'll just leave that there. Yeah, and um, let's see what else we got. Jeff uh, has got something. Hang Jeff. On. Uh, I just want to remind everybody that's listening tonight, or whenever you do listen, it's okay to have fun at Kane's Games. Absolutely. Yeah. It is absolutely fun. Okay. And this goes out to everybody, not just one person or a group of three. <laughs> Everybody gets to have fun at Kane's games. Everyone. You I mean, the, the get guy up and who dance wears the between the whistles, it's allowed. Yes. yes. Especially when the guy says, get up and dance. Get up and dance. Get up and dance. Yeah. Just dance. We <laughs> love having fun here. Oh uh, my God. Get rail up. Stop dancing. <laughs> Not right now. I don't care if you are in the snooty section. We're going to have fun anyway. Before yeah. we uh, close out, we, uh, we, we, wanna, got, we got one more special thing before that. We got to give the shout out to. Uh, section three twenty eight. What do you think I was doing? I yeah. don't know. I, I'm I'm so in. confused. Let if I was a mind reader, I would have known. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Please continue, Omar. Crystal ball. I I, I just wanted to say that uh, we lost a big <laughs> member of our community in the podcasting world. Uh, the really the ones that inspired us all. Mm-hmm. Section three three twenty eight cheaters never win podcast has uh concluded its final episode uh so shout out to mike and the boys uh for years and years of great content and we can only really only aspire to be anywhere near as great as you guys and aspire to kind of hopefully fill in some of the gap the huge gap that you guys are leaving behind yeah i mean without them any of us would not even be together if it wasn't for them you and kyle originally would have never had the idea for the podcast you wouldn't have added me in and then later amanda and jeff we yeah i mean we all basically met at their tailgates yeah so tailgates their tailgates are still going on oh yeah of course 328 as a as a group is still going on just their website and their podcast has come to a conclusion um, the love is it. still there. The community is still there. And special shout out to them. They mentioned us by name on mm-hmm. their final episode, calling us one of the podcasts of the next generation. I believe it was us, Talking Sauce, and uh, Locked Out Hurricanes. Yeah, locked on. Locked, locked on. on. Why locked do I keep on. calling them Locked Out? <laughs> it, just, it it seems to make more sense. Locked Did you have out. a traumatic but experience of being locked out of your house? Because that could explain it. I know. Maybe I'm watching too much Get Out. Yeah. Ooh. Um, but I mean, the Next Generation podcast, us so talking sauce, part of locked on. Uh, we all work <laughs> with <laughs> we all work with each other. So we all get along. We have our little we have our own little conversation group, which we call Podcast Row. We're just all hoping that we can fill the void that they left behind, and we'll try to get Mike and them on here eventually. But we're gonna give them some time, see what happens. Yeah, so this is it for us for this episode. Um, Make sure you follow us on all of our social medias. That includes Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Uh, We don't have a TikTok yet because that... Oh, my God. Because we're not 12. Well, what random (laughs) stuff would we put on there? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, look, well, also, it's <laughs> also because it's run by the Chinese. Oh my god! But look, look at your daughter; she's over there going, "No, no, don't, no, 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 don't do it." <laughs> I mean, Facebook is for old people anyway, as far as she's concerned. But yeah, TikTok. You know what? We're oh not. Oh god! Close, so we're I was good. there when Facebook started. Oh so no! You know, Dre, are you embarrassed? We're gonna go do something with you. Hmm? We're gonna so, make you act. I was you, there. You are gonna be our TikTok manager. <laughs> I'm old enough to remember. When PlayStation didn't even hook up to the uh, internet. Oh, yeah. PlayStation oh, yeah. 2. 
Hey. Well, and the original PlayStation. Sega yeah. Genesis. I think right everyone here, else buddy. here is. Sega oh, Genesis. Oh, my God. Wait. Original Nintendo. The, <laughs> the greatest hockey game ever made. Hey, 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 NHL hits 2003. Gaming system. Okay. 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 As we reminisce how old we are. Play to, <laughs> play to steal. The, you know, the oh next generation. God. The original Nintendo. Yeah, the next generation. Don't worry. <laughs> Things are going to get more fun. Game Boy. All right. It's been great. Thank you for hanging around with us today. We were Revolution Rampage.